Hello and welcome to the fifth and final video for Moonstone Week, as I've started calling this. Uh, in the previous four days of this week, I've gone through unboxing and showing off the contents of the Moonstone Arising Kickstarter, which uh, arrived here last week, and I've been very excited to receive it. Moonstone is a great fun game, and I would highly recommend that if you don't know about it, that you go and look it up. There is a link to uh, the official Discord in the description of all of my videos now. Uh, so come and join us, the creators, the rules writers, and lots of very passionate people are in there who are much more knowledgeable than I. So yeah, come and, come and check it out and uh, yeah, get involved. It's a really good game, really fun, really, uh, really different, very different to anything else that I've ever come across. Now, this video, to wrap the week up, goes back quite a long way, and I'd actually forgotten I'd filmed it. <laughs> so it's quite old footage, but I hope that you enjoy it anyway. This is me when I first got Moonstone and when I first painted up the starter set. And so there's a, a few pictures and a little bit of painting um, and a little bit of a report of how I went through painting those figures. Um, and I figured that actually, I figured, <laughs> that it was quite interesting and maybe in, um, informative if you're thinking about picking the game up to see how well the miniatures paint. Because the miniatures are a large part of this. The gameplay is wonderful also, so it's got an interesting balance of having superb miniatures and brilliant gameplay. Um, you're not just going to get for the minis like some games, uh, but the minis are worth it anyway. If, if you like painting awesome, fun, unique, gr really well sculpted and really well cast miniatures, then this is the game for you. So I hope you enjoy it. I really do uh, love this game, as you can tell. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Let me know if you are interested, if you have picked it up, if this has made you want to look into it, that'd be awesome. Um, and come over to the Discord and say hi, because I am in there quite a lot. So I'll stop rambling now. Let's go back to very, very old beard and some very old footage, and I'll see you again at the end. For my next project on the 20 minutes, I'm going to be painting up the Moonstone starter set, uh, which is just superb. So I'll prime them up um, and I will be painting them just in 20 minutes. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to filming a very short post 20 minute clip to show how they're going, talk about what paints I did, um, because I really enjoyed doing that and I've missed that. And also I'm just so impressed with these. I want to shout about this game. I've had so much fun playing it uh, and when I've played it and now I own it and I've seen the miniatures. I really can't recommend them enough. The second thing that I'm going to be doing as part of my 20 minutes is I'm building up a table of terrain for it, uh, which can also obviously be used for any other things. So I've got some like dead trees here. Um, I've got this cool, uh, all 3D printed, this cool kind of like, um, ancient monument head which I'm going to put inside uh, put on a terrain base um, and I've printed out this um, tree trunk house which has the tree trunk with a door in it and a cool little roof <laughs> so that's really good uh, and I've also got right now in front of me a little kind of pile of barrels and, and a chest and what have you so I'm just going to print out, uh, paint up those as well as part of this um, and I'm going to be continuing to print out and adding more to that pile um, I've got some stuff which is going to be printing out over the, over the next couple of days uh, which is also going to be for this so I'm probably going to mix and match once I've finished painting the starter set then I'll jump back over to the Warbats um, but for this evening I'm going to make a start on some of these amazing miniatures and some of this terrain I've printed so I kind of wish that I hadn't said I was going to do these in my 20 minutes because I'm having so much fun painting them. I've managed to get these skin tones on all but one of the miniatures. Uh, the one I didn't is the bug, um, and I'm not totally sure what colour I'm going to do. And I've also managed to get some of the metal work done. So as you can see on these two here, I've gone for um, steel. Um, this flashing dude has got more skin than you can see. His uh, big beak is hiding his big belly. Um, and I've also done here on the um, uh, some uh, like of the chainmail silver. So that was 20 minutes. As I say, I wish I'd kind of could continue. I could do an hour, I reckon. Um, but yeah, really good fun sculpts to paint and uh, looking forward to tomorrow already. So I've just finished my 20 minutes and I've been putting paint on both the miniatures and on the terrain. So let me quickly show you what I've done. Uh, Baron Von Fancy Hat is the one that I've had the most fun with, uh, going a bit crazy colors with him, but I think that he should have crazy colors. Um, I've also picked out what the uh, main kind of like heraldic colour of these dudes is going to be. This is Doug the Flatulent and I've got the awesome orange uh, banner. Um, and for Vicious Midget, I've picked the same colour out for his, if you can see, I don't know if that's coming out very well, but his uh, little feather is that colour. On top of that, I put a little bit of time and some leather work onto Flintlock. So there we are. 
um, and also did uh, Fra Flavius' cloak, burnt red. And last but not least of the miniatures uh, that I've painted just now was Beaky's beak, if that's going to focus. I have decided that I am going to be doing the terrain separately, so not part of the 20 minutes. So on top of that, I've also spent a bit of time on these trees. I've just washed them, um, put some old wood colour from Vallejo and then washed them with um, Agrax. And I've used the contrast paint Wildwood, I think it is, uh, for this one. So there's a few details that need to be picked out on that one. I don't want it to be quite so dark, but that's good base. Um, and I'm very, very close actually to finishing the little house, um, though I'm not very happy with the colour uh, that I've chosen. So I think that the door wants to be a different colour completely to the roof. But I really, really like the colour of the roof. I really like how that's turned out. So there we are. That's uh, the progress on the Moonstone project. And I will bring you back tomorrow for some more. So this evening I actually put some colour onto Grub. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do and then I suddenly had some inspiration. So as you can see, he's got some nicer, a nice yellowy green skin. Um, on top of that, I did more work on Beaky Bobby. So there he is, if he's going to focus, yes, there we are. So um, yeah, really pleased with that. Uh, I'm carrying that motif of that orange through on these, as you can see. Um, so his feathers and what have you, and also the gem in his little kind of like scepter thing is, uh, is orange, so that's that. I've also put some more work, and most of a lot of work, into flintlock. Uh, so I'm deciding to go with a bit of a kind of like steampunky effect here. So you can see I've gone for a um, bronze look on the stick and also on the sights. So that's looking good fun. And then Doug the Flatulent, um, I just painted up his little pug that he's riding on. Um, just did the base colours, there's a little bit more to do on that obviously yet. Um, and the final thing that I've actually made a little bit of progress on, more progress on this evening, um, I've actually made a start as well on Eric the Squire. So um, I've done his hair a little bit and done his wooden sword and what have you, but not very much. Um, been a good evening, enjoyed it. Um, I'm just taking my time a bit more on these, trying not to feel pressured because I want them to look lovely. So rather than thinking I need to finish them in a certain amount of time, I'm just stopping and looking and pausing. So it's a slower 20 minutes. Uh, per, you know, in terms of smashing things out, um, but I'm really enjoying it. This evening for my 20 minutes, I got back to the painting desk. Last night I spent the time assembling some more war bats, so there was no painting, so I didn't film. Um, but tonight I've got these four, which is half of the starter set, ready for washes. So I might look at them tomorrow and see if I've missed anything, but right now I'm very, very happy with how they look. Um, and just with some washes, I think they'll be done. They were the low-hanging fruit. The other ones are more complex paint jobs and I have been quite tired today, so I just thought I'd just finish these off, get a little bit of success and uh, feel a bit better about it all. And then tomorrow I can look at the other minis and do them, which I'll find hopefully easier tomorrow. Now on top of that, let me just move these out of the way. On top of that, I have also basically finished the painting for this little building. Um, I've just realized I forgot to paint the doorknob. <laughs> so I'll do that in brass. But I changed the color to blue of the door and I think it works really, really nicely with how the roof works. And then inside I've painted like a dark red. So I'm gonna come along, I'm gonna put some scenic material on the outsides and I'm gonna put some sand inside. So where you can see it's just gray at the moment, I'm actually gonna put that as a sand. So I need to just paint the doorknob and the hinges, which I'll do now before I go up. Um, and that's also done. And behind me, I have racked up loads and loads and loads of awesome 3D printed scenery that I've been doing, um, which is for this. So that will be continuing. I've also um, started up on my little kind of like adventurer's cache. So you can see I've painted the canvas, just got some barrels and some uh, what have you to paint on that. That won't take me long, probably finish that tomorrow. So yeah, a really good evening um, of both 20 minutes on the miniatures and a little bit of time spent on the terrain. I can safely say that without this challenge or this kind of like dedication to 20 minutes a night, I would not have come down because I'm tired and I've got a cold. As you can hear, I'm sniffling a lot. However, I've come down 20 minutes and I've managed to get these very nearly finished all by the washes. So um, Eric's got a little bit more work to be done on him um, in terms of base colours. 
uh, but I'm pretty pleased with Grub and with Baron von Fancy Hat. So that means that tomorrow I'm going to be able to work on the final mini that is still needing a lot of base work, which is flintlock here. Um, and uh, I'll, I should be able to get the rest of the stuff done um, in terms of washes tomorrow, which is really cool. So I've had a lot of fun painting these up. Um, it was a good idea picking the low hanging fruit yesterday because this evening I actually was quite inspired by these and uh, really enjoyed painting them. So yeah, that just shows that sometimes uh, discretion is the better part of valour. So let's see if we can keep these in focus. This evening I've put the washes on and I'm probably happy enough to let these now go for basing. Uh, they've been a lot of fun to paint. As you can see, some of the washes are still wet. Um, the only one that might need a little bit more work is maybe put some colour onto Doug the Flatulence little pug. Um, and I might highlight his teeth. So he's one that may get a little bit more, a little bit more love. Um, managed to get quite nice colours on these, which I'm quite pleased about. Um, I was a little bit of a struggle on this one here, on ba the Baron from Fancy Hat, just because I went so colourful and it actually ended up being a little bit difficult for me to balance those colours out. Eric the Squire, on the other hand, has been a whole lot of fun. Um, and I've done a nice blue top with the nice red leather trousers and uh, I had a lot of fun painting him up. I found him quite simple in the end. Um, he made me nervous when I first started. Flintlock, I went for kind of a little bit of a forest, forester type look with green and browns and uh, a little bit kind of camouflaged, maybe not sure, just uh, that's how he turned out. But I'm really pleased with his gun um, and the way that looks, uh, a little bit kind of like steampunk with the brass. Grub here, um, gone bright, gone yellows. Um, um, I probably might repaint him once I get some um, of the colour shift paints. I might put a colour shift over the top of him. But for now, I'm happy enough. He looks a bit kind of like unpleasant, doesn't he? <laughs> a bit unhealthy. Uh, the Vicious Midget, probably the simplest paint job that I did. So just a lot of steel, uh, a little bit of kind of like light colour for the cloth, um, an orange highlight for his feather, and then Magic in a Bottle, otherwise known as Agrax Earthshade. And saving my favourite for last, because he is clearly my favourite, Beaky Bobby. I've had the most fun painting this guy. Uh, he is just brilliant. Really, really enjoyed that and a great, great sculpt and fun model. So there we are. I've finished to my satisfaction, I think apart from the couple of touch-ups I've mentioned, the project for painting up the starter set from Moonstone. So yeah, I'm going to go on to basing them now and I'll probably bring you along for that as well, though it will be a very simple basing job. And now we come to painting and there was one thing that I've had to do. Um, certainly for Doug the Flatulent, you can see I've used green stuff to fill in the gap because he does not have a slotter. So we'll just like glue on over the top. Uh, but also Eric had a quite a large gap at the side of his slot that meant there was going to be a big hole in the base. So I've just gone around with some green stuff uh, and filled in the gaps that there were around the slots. So just a, a little extra step I had to do. And what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to make use of Luke's Geek Gaming now Mediterranean soil base ready which I have loads of, because of reasons, <laughs> which maybe one day I'll get to. Um, so I'm going to need to glue uh, Doug down, obviously, so I'll do that with super glue. Um, but I'll just quickly show you how I go about using the base ready. It is very, very easy. So um, I'll just quickly adjust the camera angle, I think. So let's do Eric. That makes sense, because he was the one closest to hand. So I've got the fast drying basing glue, which I'm going to need to order some more of. And what you do is you literally just load that base up. Now that's one thing I'm actually really liking about this set of miniatures is the base has a little rim. So you put a fair amount of glue on. And get yourself an old paintbrush. And the reason you want an old paintbrush is this glue doesn't wash off easily. So yeah. And just push that around, make sure that you get a good full coverage. So with that done, what I now do is I take my pot, 
here and I do this and it's based <laughs> pretty much simple as that so a little bit of a wipe around the rim obviously if you want to you can paint the rim and what I will do after this is I will then put some water down PVA to seal it uh, but this is that simple that quick to use this basing stuff so I'm going to do the others um, and obviously glue uh, Doug down as I say and then I'll I'll glue him I'll uh, do his basing once he's glued um, and then yeah this project is complete which is pretty awesome very pleased about that so this has sat now for quite a long time actually <laughs> it's been busy and what I'm going to do is I've just basically cleaned the edge and the rim with my finger just to take the dust off and now here I've got some water down PVA this is actually my scenic glue um, <clears throat> if you want to know how I go about making that there is a link in the description below but the brief answer is it's watered down PVA so I'm going to paint that all over the bases let that to dry and I'm currently debating what colour to paint the rims because the rims are so prominent I think I do need to paint them um, I do have some ideas um, I think I'm not sure what I'm going to do to paint him but I think I'm going to paint the these ones um, in this lovely fire orange colour um, because that seems to be the theme that I've gone for for example here we have vicious midget um, and he obviously has got that flamey orangey highlight and all of the ones for that um, <clears throat> for this race have uh, have the flame orange so that's my idea for them um, and I'm not sure what I'll do about the uh, about the humans um, I'm still not fully au fait with all the terms and what they're called unfortunately so anyway, I'm just going to seal these bases now um, and think for a little bit longer about what color I'm going to go for the rims but I think flame orange is what's going to be done for him Well, there we are that wraps up the week i hope you've really enjoyed this series of videos it's been a lot of fun for me to put together i've really enjoyed doing something a little bit more focused and hopefully it's been interesting and informative for you who have watched it all i've had some really cool comments they've really inspired me as well i love reading them and replying to them so don't be shy do comment below and that's also been a really good thing about doing a bit of a more uh, structured week and filling it up all about moonstone so let me know what you think in the comments below don't be shy i will reply even if you've been negative I appreciate everything because uh, I'm just a bloke in a room and uh, if there's something I've done wrong or you think I'm gonna do better I'm always all ears for suggestions and advice so yeah don't be shy and thank you so much for watching particularly if you've watched every single one of them and if you've made it this far in this video I really appreciate it I will wrap up by saying as I always do please stay healthy stay safe and stay well <laughs>